Hi, I'm Megan Hepner, creative editor for Creating Keepsakes magazine, and I want to show you one of my favorite new scrapbooking accessories, decorative pins. Uh, they are kind of a throwback to hat pins of yesteryear, so they're a little bit more on the fancy side, but they're used as scrapbooking accents and embellishments. They are widely available from many companies on, uh, in the industry, and you have so many choices, so it really is fun to go pin shopping. You can just do a basic pin, and it has the pearl top to it, and you can get those both at the sewing store or, again, in the scrapbooking aisle. Or if you want a little bit more fancy, get one with a little bling bling at the top, like that one. That's a Teresa Collins product. Or if you want it even cutesy and all done for you, it looks like you put a lot of work into dressing up the head of this pin, but actually it's pre-made like this from Jelly Bean Soup, and you can see there are little pearls layered over the paper that's at the top of that pin. These are just some of the options. There are so many, and they are very versatile to use in your techniques. So you can take the pin and just leave it as is on your page, or you can use it as an element and get a little bit more creative with it. Here are some ideas doing that. The first one is something I made for a Halloween page. I wanted kind of a nighttime feel, a happy nighttime though, so kind of a whimsical design. And I really liked the star pins from Maya Road. I thought, hey, that could be a shooting star if I just flip it around. So that's what I did here. I put the pin going the other direction at an angle. And by simply layering it over some tape behind there, it makes a tail and looks like that star is shooting in the sky. So that kind of helped me set the nighttime stage. And then for my journaling, I wanted to use the pin, somehow incorporate the pin. And I like the way the pearl pin uh, almost made like a bullet for a bulleted list or a numbered list. So down here, again with the tape, I put that in place first. That's where I'm going to write. And I added the pin just under each strip of tape, one pin kind of as a bullet, and then a number to the side. So I could write four things that I liked about my cousin's happy haunted house. So that's a really quick way to do some journaling and think beyond just a basic, basic uh, journaling spot. You can also use pins on your borders. That's what I've done across the bottom of the layout with some star pins. These are also from Maya Road. And it's a very easy technique to do. You just have to have a little bit of patience because you do need to do some fine work with your hands down on the bottom tying some knots. But I'll show you how simple that really is. It's one of your first things you're going to do on your projects. So you'll start with most of your page undone, but you do want to add a grassy hill or background. And then the picket, the border is actually a picket fence. That's kind of the look I was going for. So um, the hill and the grass is behind the fence to go with that whimsical idea on the layout. First thing you'll do is take your star pins and position them across the bottom of your page, however close or far apart you want them to be. And once you've got them spaced the way you like them, just use a glue dot and glue down the head of the pin. You don't want to glue the body of it, but obviously that would be really hard because it's such a small surface, but also because we're going to be using some um, twine and threading it up that in a moment, so it needs to be free. So just put glue behind the top of the pins. Once they're secure, take some floss. This is where it gets a little more intricate, but it's just tying a basic knot, and I'll show you what I mean. First thing you'll do is, with your floss, you want to measure it to be a little bit longer on either side than your actual page, so about an inch or two beyond the 12-inch length. And that's because when you tie knots, it'll get shorter, and you don't want to run out of floss when you're almost done with your fence. So I've done that already, and then you'll take your, uh, make sure you take your floss and line it up and tie a knot where each pin falls. So I have one knot per pin. And that one's already up there, threaded, but really it wouldn't even be on the pin yet. You can just see how there's a knot that falls where each pin falls. And then when you tie your knot, you'll use that to thread the floss or the fence um, all the way up the fence post. So once you have your knot, go ahead and pierce the pin through it and slide it up the length of your fence post, like that. And you do that with each knot, you're going to go ahead and don't feel like you can't slide it down and up a little bit to get that on there and then bring them up. And once you have all of your knots poked through and slide, um, slid in place, go ahead and get a second piece of twine and do it again. And you've got that picket fence look. That's very unique um, for your designs and definitely something that your people flipping through your album are going to notice and enjoy. So there are some pin ideas for borders and journaling and accents. Let's look at some for photographs. This is a design by Maggie Holmes, and she has taken a nice, um, fancy, shiny pin there in the corners of each photo. I like this because it doesn't detract from the photo. They are subtle pins, but they do dress the whole page up a little bit more. 
and she stuck them through the photos, almost like photo corners or photo anchors. It just as a classy way to hold that photo in place or mimic the look of holding it in place. You can still glue the photo down. And for a little something extra on this one, she even added a little word strip with the word wish. So she made her photo anchor at double as a little flag, which is super cute. And speaking of anchoring, she's also anchored her title. So down here lower on the layout, you can see she's created some little flags using just a basic flower pin. These are from Little Yellow Bicycle. And that's how they're sold on, in a circle with lots of colors. So you can use any colors you want to to go with your project. And then some scraps of paper. So this is kind of the before and after for you. You can see it was just a pin and paper. And it went from that to that by cutting it in a triangular shape and wrapping it around the top of the pin. And you don't even have to do triangle if you want to just do a flag like that yellow one. Again, it's just a scrap of paper and the edge has been curled up. So if you're doing this, it might be fun to do it with some double-sided paper because then when you curl up the edge, you'll see that second pattern on the back, which is fun. And there you have flags. Flags would be great as accents as standalone or if you want to wrap some twine around them. Again, as a tidal anchor, go ahead and tie some twine around one of your flags, string it across your page, tie it to a flag on the other side, add some pennants, and you have a great tidal treatment there. What a festive design. Our last one is by Kim Watson, and she got a little bit fancier with her pins. So if you want to challenge yourself with a pin technique, this is one you certainly want to try. It is using a circular foam dot, straight pins, and twine to create a really cool woven accent. So you'll start with your circular foam dot, dimensional foam adhesive. If you don't have one that's already in a circular shape, just take one of your larger square ones and cut that into a round shape. And then take some pins. You'll want them to be pretty sharp because they'll need to stick into the foam. These ones are from Webster's Pages. And you just turn it on its side and go ahead. I've already started this one. And you just stick the pin right there in the side of your adhesive, right there in the foam, like that. And you're gonna do that so they're spaced relatively equally apart and fill the entire circle like this. And that's gonna be the base for your weaving. And then with your floss or your twine, go ahead and this is a double-sided adhesive, so remove one of the adhesive parts and that will hold your floss in place. So you go ahead and stick it on there, holds it in place, and then your tail's not gonna go all over the place. It secures it in place so you can start weaving and your tail won't flap around. And then you're gonna wrap it, you just take your and wrap it around the first pin like that and then you'll go to the second one and you'll repeat that motion. Don't worry about being right down near the center even if you have to do it up here and then slide it down that's just fine. You repeat it again and you can see that weaving look is starting to form. And you just continue to do this all the way around. It's kind of a fun one to do if you're sitting in front of the TV you want to keep your hands busy something to teach your kids if you want to show them a new weaving technique and go all the way around until you've done the full length of each pin and filled out that shape with your weaving. For the center, because you don't want to leave it like that, go ahead and take either a sticker or an accent or a flower and go ahead and stick that in the middle to finish off the design and you have a really unique to you accent to use on any of your projects or greeting cards or that could even be a very cool holiday ornament or gift tag. So with all of these ideas in place, you can see why pins are one of my favorite accessories, and I hope they quickly become one of yours as well.